So my name's Sam Haydock, I'm the Programme Coordinator for the School for Social Entrepreneurs in Plymouth and in Bristol. Uh, we had our Bristol graduation last week and a uh, very, different, very different affair this week but equally as inspiring and wonderful. Um, this cohort have absolutely bonded together, they're a very, very tight bunch, they really support each other and um, it's been an absolute pleasure to see them grow over the last 12 months and work with them. I just wanted to say many congratulations for a huge achievement in getting to this point. I remember when I first interviewed you when you were making your pitches to join this programme and seeing how much you've come on is just stupendous. Uh, my advice to you is you've gone really well so far but make sure you keep in contact with each other. It's still a tough road to go through. Getting through this programme is hard work but getting out and making this happen when you lose that sport is even harder. So I would encourage you to make sure you keep in contact with Dartington, with the SSE and your fellow students because they will give you the support that will enable you to get through those lows as well as those highs. And good luck. I'm Chris Penberthy, I'm a Cabinet Member with Plymouth City Council and have delegated responsibility for the support for social enterprise in the city. It's been great for me to be involved with the SSE programme this year, to have met students right at the very beginning and today right at the very end of their journey with SSE has been exciting to see the range of businesses that are developing as social enterprises not just thinking about profit but thinking about what you add back to communities is really exciting and here in Plymouth we're Britain's first social enterprise city and we need more people like you so I'd encourage you to stay here to build your businesses here to join the social enterprise network and I look forward in future years to being able to continue to put grants and investment into social enterprises like yours as we have done over the past year. So well done all of you and good luck for your futures. Hi, my name is Pete Yeo. Uh, I'm, uh, I sit on the advisory panel for Dartington School of Social Entrepreneurs. Um, I'm a philanthropist and uh, a, a often called a serial cheerleader or supporter of a social enterprise. Um, we've been at the Plymouth graduation here today. I was at the Bristol graduation last week. Um, I've been to two graduations before and I, in all honesty I couldn't wait to get back to another one. Um, they are incredibly, uh, incredibly inspiring. I mean, I thought last week was the best that I'd ever been to. The, I, we shouldn't really judge them, I have to say, but the, the stories of the entrepreneurs are always very personal and powerful, but I think they were maxed out today here in Plymouth, um, and I'm sure there's probably a, a complex array of reasons for that, but incredibly moving, and, it, and one of the things that strikes me and certainly struck some of the people I spoke to in Bristol last week is that we really need to take these stories outside of the graduation, which obviously has limited numbers, but and take it to the wider communities of Plymouth and Bristol and, and beyond, you know, Devon and, and the Southwest, because it's the, they're the kind of stories that will really lift people at scale, if you know what I mean. And, um, and I think if you look at the broader, broader sphere of social enterprise and, and business for good and that kind of thing, there's, there's a palpable shift happening around the world now. And, and it's a very, very exciting time. And we're seeing more people kind of being drawn into this sphere and I'm involved with, with uh, um, an effort initiative up in North Devon where I live to kind of create another kind of local network there to support our local change makers up there. You know, all, all of this nested in, 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 in larger, larger spheres and, and networks and um, yeah, it's a really, really exciting time and I, you know, I'm looking forward to the, the sounds like there's going to be another short course in North Devon next year. They had the Dartington had ran the first short course uh, up in North Devon this summer and went really, really well. And yeah, there's more of these amazing change makers are coming out of the uh, coming out of their communities to to build a better world for everyone. And it's it's a really exciting time. I'm Councillor Brian Vincent, Cabinet Member for Environment. I'm the Deputy Lord Mayor of Plymouth, and I'm here today because we've uh, been to the Social Enterprise entrepreneurs graduation which was absolutely fantastic and I've got to congratulate the 19 students who have done extremely well their projects are so creative and inspiring and as a city we welcome them with open arms and they all should be incredibly proud of themselves 
um, and I just wish them all the luck for the future. Yeah, for <clears throat> obviously, I, I sort of, as from an environmental point of view, um, talking to some of the people there that were involved with the environmental projects at Chapman Tor Bay with the trees, something I've been very keen to link in with for a long time anyway. So I've made that link now, personally made the link with that person, but also what other people have brought and, and shared with us today, their own personal experiences sometimes. Uh, and I think if you've had a personal experience, you're the best one to take that through to support maybe whatever that cause may be. Hi, my name's Denise Billington and I'm the founder of the NOAA Project Sneaky. Um, I've graduated from business school today. I'm extremely proud and I gave a killer presentation. But that wasn't the presentation that I originally started with. Um, luckily, my mentor Sheena cast her all-knowing, all-seeing eye over things and gave me some really valuable food for thought um, to talk about where I was with the project and to run through my pitch. And I was quite emotional at that time. And the pitch that I wrote was kind of all about me because I thought that that was important that people understood the impacts of when something devastating happens, you need to be able to turn to somebody. And that's what people do with me. They turn to our project. They've got nobody else to turn to. But because I was emotional, I got caught up in, in me, me, me. And Sheena sat me down really calmly and just said, that's great, that's relevant. But remember where you are, OK? You're in a room and you've got potential people who may want to invest in you, who may want to support you. They need to know about your projects. They need to know what you want, you know. So that, that was an, an eye opener. And I'm really, really pleased that we had that conversation because without that, my pitch would have been drastically different. So. I think the thing for you, Denise, you, you clearly have got this lived experience. And as social entrepreneurs, it's really important that people come from an issue or, or they seek to I seek a solution to an issue they have experience of. That's where the power is. And Denise is quite right, you can get lost in that emotion. And although people might buy into the emotion, if you want to grow your business, if you want to spread the word and make life better for others, you need to be able to communicate what the impact is of what's happened to you. And I think hopefully at FSE will help people to look at their story, look at where they've come from, and really expand that out into how they're going to help others. And people in the audience, yes, they need to know what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, how much it's going to cost you, what help you need. And they really need to have not only your personal credibility, but the understanding that you can take this thing forward. And you're not just a story. And as we've heard today, Denise is not just a story. Hello, my name's Kevin Frediani, and I'm a fellow of the School of Social Enterprise. My uh, journey began two years ago on the programme, and it's, I'm reminded of that today, witnessing the recent graduates in just how far I've travelled. The journey began with a, a project that was realising vertical farming, growing food close to centres of, of consumption. Uh, I have used those skills to improve my communication about the story I was trying to tell to help that come to fruition and it's helping others to grow and I'm proud to say that, that those I see projects now emerging in men, many of the major cities in the UK. Looking at today's cohort graduating I realised just how, how much the programme helps people progress. I saw some of them at the beginning of their journey and they must have looked like me, naive in terms of their, how far they had to travel to realise it but with something of inspiration that took them out of their comfort zone and said, I need help. Well, I'm still here now on that journey and I don't think it will ever end. And I just, the challenge is to you out there who may want to join us, please do, because it's a better journey, better shared than taken alone. Thank you. My name is Sheena Leaf and I'm the manager for the learning in Plymouth on this Lloyd's social entrepreneurship program and I'm thinking as I'm sitting here now quietly in this council chamber where the students were talking earlier and were giving their graduation presentations 
about the legacy really that SSE passes on. It's like a baton, I suppose. Um, they've told their stories, they've given a flavor of the businesses they're creating. And here we are with new students just started last week and our, our next cohort of students starting in Bristol. And I suppose I'm taking this opportunity to think how um, they've grown and I've journeyed alongside them during this year and uh, what fantastic potential each one of them offers for s solutions to social change really. Um, so it's been my real privilege to work with them this year. I've got new people coming on board and they came today and they've said to me, wow, we can't believe we'll look like that in a year's time. And you know what? They will, because I've seen this happen now for a few years and it's just an amazing transformation. So it's been my privilege and my pleasure.